oh God. Father, we thank you, oh God, for who you are, Lord Jesus. We thank you as we come here together, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We would not go back the same that we came. Hallelujah. We want to hear from you this afternoon. It doesn't matter how much of us get. We want to hear from you. We want to know, Father God, that you're not leaving here the same way that you came. Lord, we ask for you to bless each and every one of us. Bless our pastor in the name of Jesus as he brings forth that word this evening, oh God. As, as my, my, my pastor, oh God, I pray that you, Father God, will encourage her this evening as she brings forth the word today in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I pray for the anointing on the word. I pray for the God for the Holy Ghost cry upon her. I pray in the name of Jesus for the power of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. God, I pray, oh God, that your will be done over her life. Cover her with the blood of Jesus, oh God. Saturate this place here today, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We invite your presence to come here, Lord. Unless your presence is not here, this meeting will be in vain. So we say, Lord, have your way today, this evening, and do only what you alone can do here this evening. Yes, because we want to hear from you this evening, oh God. So we say, Lord, come. Yes. Be with us, hallelujah. Yes. And then two and three are gathered. Yes. You are in the midst of God. So we thank you for being here with us and we'll continue until yes. we leave here this evening. Lord. We bind the plans of the enemy and we plan yes. not yes. to come yes. against this meeting here this evening. We come against through the power of the blood of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. So Father God, have your way today. Yes. Move by your spirit here yes. today. Yes. We give you all the praise. We give you all the thanks. And we say, Lord, have your way. And Lord, we grieve yes, yes. for this happy morning, Jesus. To
Because Christ is in our midst. Christ is in our midst. Joy. Real joy. Yeah. 
Lord, I declare as your prophet today that what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not entered into the heart of man, that today it will manifest here. In the name of Jesus, it will manifest. Because you are the God of all flesh. And there is nothing too hard for you. For with God, nothing is impossible. We give you praise.
that today, today, you will hear the cry of our heart. That today, today, chains will be broken and captives will be set free. But the anointing that destroys you, let every demonic yoke be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Not only bring change, but bless your people. He proceeds in them today. He proceeds the fullness of your goodness in us today. We thank you, Father. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? We thank you that we are more than conquerors. We thank you that because Christ overcame and we are in Christ, we overcome also. We thank you, Abba Father, that we are overcomers in Christ. Amen. Holy Spirit, we hand over this meeting to you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We may be seated in the presence of his glory. The Lord is in our midst. We welcome you to our victory service today. The Lord is my strength. I am so beat up. I don't even know how I'm standing on my two feet. It's the grace of God. But the Lord is in our midst. He said, let the weak say I am strong. Amen. So I say I am strong. Amen. And I believe God wants to speak to us today. Many times we speak to God. I know I'm, I'm driving here from New Jersey. And I said to him, you know something about God? He's a good listener. You can pray for seven hours. You will be listening. But if you talk to me for seven hours, after 30 minutes, I might not listen. I'm like, can't you just summarize? Let me go. If you like, pray for 24 hours. He's listening. He's listening to every word you are saying. And then he says, I wonder when you will give me an opportunity to speak. I wonder if they will give me an opportunity to speak. And I wonder if I speak, if they would listen. So today let us listen to what God has to say. His word is alive and active. His word is spirit and life. Sharper than double-edged sword. Today the scripture will be reading when we come from Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 to 33. And it reads, See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. Pay attention to him and listen to what he says. Do not rebel against him. He will not forgive your rebellion, since my name is in him. If you listen carefully to what he says and do all that I say, I'll be an enemy to your enemy and will oppose those who oppose you. My angel will go ahead of you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, and Jebusites, and I will wipe them out. Do not bow down before their gods or worship them or follow their practices. You must demolish them and break their sacred stones to pieces. Worship the Lord your God and his blessings will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you, and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. I will send a hornet ahead of you to drive the Hivites, Canaanites, Hittites out of your way, but I will not drive them out in a single year. Because the land will become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. I will establish the borders from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea and from the desert to the Euphrates River. I will give into your hands the people who live in the land and you will drive them out before you. Do not make a covenant with them or with their gods. Do not let them live in your land or they will call you to sin against me, because the worship of their gods will certainly be a snare to you. God bless the readers, the doers, and the hearers as well. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you, Jesus. I believe the Lord has something wonderful for us today. Amen. And I pray that our lives will be changed. When we leave this place, we will not be the same. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As the Lord was speaking to me, I believe he wants us, the title of my message today is Conforming to the Unconditional Love of God. Amen. Amen. And we know that this is a season of much love. But who are we loving? Are we loving things, material things? Are we lo lo loving holidays? Or are we falling more in love with our Lord Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. I want to start my message by saying, also, that we are about to enter in a new season, a new year. And I know we are all excited about the word that's going to come forth, New Year's Eve. But I'm admonishing all of us, and I wanted to hear me. How you end is exactly how you do. How you end a season or how you end a thing is exactly how you're going to begin. What am I saying? What I want to say is, there are some work that we ought to do. See, we got used through the years. I'll, I'll make a list. This is what I'm going to do for the new year, and it never comes to pass. But today I'm beckoning you that you take inventory of your life so that you have a closer walk with God. So that your relationship with God will be foremost because you could accept, you could hear the word, but if you don't make changes, changes so that the word would dwell in your heart, it makes no sense. So we are at a critical time today, the last service, where we'll be together, and I'm going to talk about how we get ready to receive and to enter in. We could enter in and never get out of Canaan, right? But we could enter in as we examine ourselves, as we look at our list from last year. Did we accomplish the things that we said we would have? Or do we really need to need to fall in love with him all over again. Did we comply with the things which he told us to do in the last year, this year? Or are we still procrastinating? Hallelujah. Have we been obedient to him, to the things of God? And this is what we're going to talk about today because I believe it's crucial especially in the time in which we are living right now. We are living in perilous times. Hallelujah. We got to correct our wrongs and dwell on what's right. And everything that's right comes from him. The Lord wants to bless us, but we got to love him. Hallelujah. We got to love him from the depths of our heart. The Bible says, love it with our heart, our mind, our soul, everything in us. Got to exemplify how much we love Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read Mark 12, 13, and 31. Again, our script, uh, title of our sermon is Conforming to the Unconditional Love of God. Mark 12, 30 and 31. And the Bible reads, And you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart 
and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. This is the type of love that the world doesn't have, that the world doesn't want. We can only have that love, that agape love, in Christ. Only a true believer could have that love. And what does the love require? That we love him with everything in us. When you love somebody to that extent, you don't hurt them. You don't compromise. You don't sin. You have to fear the Lord. You just want to walk exactly how he wants you to walk before him. Hallelujah. Get rid of the baggage. Get rid of things of the world. And then he says, and the second is like namely this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So we love God with all our heart, soul, mind. And we also have to love for our neighbors. If we truly love and say that we love God. We got to love our neighbors, just like we love ourselves. When you love as much as you desire, your desire is, like I said, you never hurt someone. We must remember, number one, that we have to worship no other God than him. Why? Because he said he's a very jealous God. We could worship our children. We could worship our job. We could worship our husband, our wives. More than God. And he said, worship no other God, no other idol but him. Jesus. You can't say that you love God on your own terms. God love, God's love, as we just read, is conditional. You will say, do this, and I will bless you. Like the scripture just read, we're going to get into that later on. But his love is conditional. His love is unconditional. But our love towards him is conditional. Amen? I'm going to turn, as a matter of fact, I'm going to read the scripture just came to me. John 3, 16, we all know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved the world and he gave all that he had so I and you could be here today receiving, hallelujah, Jesus. He went to the cross, he died for us. Our sin was eradicated. And this is what he has done for us. He gave everything that he had. Everything. Are you ready to give everything that you have for God? Anybody or nobody? One person. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But, but, but truly, being honest, are you at that point that you are ready to die for him? Or that you are ready to give everything for the Lord Jesus Christ? So we got work to do, amen? amen? Most of us are not sure. So we got some work to do. Hallelujah. God's love doesn't disappoint. The love of God never, ever disappoints. We disappoint him. But he never does and he never will. Why? Because he's perfect. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. 
plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future that only comes through Christ. The world can't give that to you. It only comes through Christ and it's permanent. Things of the world are not stable, but things of God remain. You say you're going to do something, he does it. And that depends on how we conform to his love. How we conform to the things of God. 1 John 4, 7 said, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, that agape love. The world does not know this love. It cannot be faked. In other words, the world should be wrought to jealousy when they see how we love one another. When the world see how we love a brother, a sister, they should want to know that Jesus that we talk about, that love of God that's demonstrated. They should say, what God do you serve? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So these are things that I'm just giving the preliminaries. That if we say we love God, we got to love our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors. He's even say love our enemies. As we love ourselves. Jesus. What kind of love do you possess today? Could someone easily say, He who loves not, knows not God, for God is love. That's 1 John 4 7 say, He who loves not, Knows not God, for God is love. That's his character. That's who he is. He's love. So if we can't love one another, if we can't love our neighbors, if there's no the love of God is not in us. Hallelujah today. Who are we? Who are we serving? Not this God that we are talking about, because he, he is love. He loves us all. He doesn't love our sin. But he loves us anyway. Say, I wish that none will perish, but that all will come to eternal life. Because of his love, he went to the cross for us. Hallelujah. So this is something we got to work on and check before I, I recommend before the new year sets in. We want to be different. We want to be right with God. I don't care whatever word is preached. And you are not right with God. And you are in sin. And you can't love like he loves. You have a problem. Hallelujah. Jesus. The greatest gift you can give is the love. The greatest gift you can give to God is to love one another. You love those who despitefully use you. Sometimes it's difficult. Those that have abused you, it's hard. It's not easy. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we are able to do it. This flesh wouldn't allow us to do it. This flesh will remind us, remember, in 1200, 50 years ago, what this person did to me. But the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us to forgive and to love. We have to do it. It's mandated that we forgive. Jesus. Some of the things, hallelujah. As I look at, uh, we talk about forgiveness, Second Corinthians, 2, 10, and 11. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive you also. For if I forgive anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes, 
forgive I it in the person of Christ. Forgiveness is a great part of the Christian faith and is demanded by Christ that we forgive. Not that we want to or should we, but is demanded of Christ that you forgive. And it goes on to say, I want us to listen carefully, verse 11. Lest Satan, the devil, should get an advantage over you. That's deep right there. If you don't forgive, you open a door for Satan. You open a door for the devil to have an advantage of you, to take advantage of you. Sometimes we wonder why we can't get healed, why we can't get delivered. And it's because of something we hold in here. Satan has an advantage over us because we can't forgive. So saints is mandated today that we forgive before we enter in. Amen? The next one is obedience. We talk about obedience. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn to the scripture this morning. This Exodus 23. We will, that my brother read. Hallelujah. Here the Lord wanted to build a relationship with Israel while they were in Canaan. And as you see, the whole shop, the whole, all the verses he read, there was a requirement. If you do this, I will do this. So, our love towards God is conditional. Right through the scripture, he said, I will bless you if you do something. I will move away your enemies if you do something. It's a requirement. And therefore, God expects us to be obedient to what he tells us to do. Verse 20 says, Behold, I set an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him. And obey his word. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon you. Your transgressions, for my name is in him. Here we start. The angel, he said, he's saying to them, Beware of that angel. Obey his voice. Provoke him not, because he wouldn't pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. And as I was reading this, I realized God could use anything on anybody. Anybody, he used a donkey, hallelujah. He could use a person, could use somebody on the street. But once we are connected with God and we have the love of Christ, we are going to be able to connect with what that person. Sometimes somebody just meet you and say a sentence. They say, oh my God, this person has to be sent by God. Because it's something you've been worrying about, something you've been going through. And a few words could liberate you. And it may never come from the person, from a prophet or somebody that you're expecting to speak a word into your lives. So as we draw closer to God, God is saying, as using this angel, and say, obey him, hear his voice. Hallelujah. Because my name is in him. My name is in him. I am sending him. My name is in him. I am going to be speaking to him. In the name of Jesus. And amen. a lot of people miss our blessings because we're looking for a certain person to speak. A certain person to preach. A certain person to share with us. Hallelujah, he might come from the most unlikely person. 
This year I believe that God is going to do some unusual things. Despite everything, the trouble that we're going to face for the next year. It's not going to be easy. Perilous times. But as we draw closer to God, as we love Him with all our heart and soul, we're not going to miss Him. But we got to do some work. Saints, there's a, how much? Another week left? We got to do some work. We got to stay before the Lord, seek Him, hear what the Lord is saying. Corrections that we need to make. There are some crucial things that we need to change. We have one week left. I caution you, don't go in the same way you are today. Examine yourselves. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit speak to us. Verse 3. But if you shall indeed obey his voice. Here we go. If you shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. This is what we are saying today. Take hold of what he's saying. Then I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. See, so obey his voice. Do as I speak. Not only obey and hear, but do. Faith with all works is there. Is that right? right. But do it. And I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angels shall go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. But if enemies would be around, God is saying, as you do as I say, Hallelujah. He will handle the situation. He will get rid of them. We have a lot of eyes. Some of us still smoke. That's an eye. Some of us still cuss like a sailor. That's another eye. Some of us is messing around with some things that aren't God, idolatry. So downstairs where they say palm reading. Some of us still messing around with that. That's another height. Some of us is, is, is adultery, fornication, and you're in church. That's an enemy to God. Let's be real today. Let's examine ourselves. We don't want anybody to be left behind. We've been very nonchalant all our years about a new year is coming. I can't wait for the word. What change have you made? What changes? What are you doing for God? What have you done for Him? You still compromise. That's a big act. You're ashamed to talk about Him. Because of what people will say. That's another enemy. There's a whole lot of enemies. Habits. So he's saying today that if you hear his word like you are today and you don't change and there is not and there is not this longing in your heart to draw near and become like him you wouldn't chase your enemies and sometimes this is the thing that's holding us back from our deliverance. Holding us back from our blessing. Let's be real. God would not change his word for anybody. His word never changes. His yes is yes and his no is no. Period. He doesn't change for anyone. So we've got, like I said, we've got to be obedient. We've got to be real. And some of us feel 
And God don't see everything we do. Oh, it's just a little thing. Like a man, I had a discussion with this man yesterday. And he said to me, I've been drinking and driving for 41 years. Sure did. And I say, do you know, in one day, one second, you could get caught? And he said, ah, I've been doing it so long. Sure did. And this is what some of us Christians feel. Oh, I've been doing it so long. It's just a small thing. Oh, I don't think God is going to see me or, or do anything. Because habits, there are some habits that we need to break. Amen. Before 2022, Amen. we have a week left. There are some habits. Brothers and sisters, And I'm not taking myself out, all of us. This word is for every one of us. Hallelujah. I stand accused this evening. You shall not bow down to their gods. Listen, if you have any candles that you still burn, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you put anything before God, it could be a dog, your cat. Anything you put before God becomes an idol. Nor serve them, nor do after their weeks, but you shall utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Hallelujah. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread, and your water, and he will take sickness away from the midst of you. What a promise. What a promise. Those little foxes we got to get rid of. Hallelujah. See, then he will heal us. And healing is not only sickness. Healing could be emotional. Emotional struggle. Healing could be a habit. But he said he will heal us. Some of our hearts are sick. We have a broken heart. We got a sick heart. We got a heart that don't know how to forgive. Verse 27, and I will send fear, send my fear before you, and will destroy all the people to whom you shall come, and I will make your enemies turn their backs on you. This is all the promises that he's going to do for you. Once you line up with what he's saying. See, God always wants to bless us. Blesses us in our going in and our coming in. But we don't, do we apply ourselves so that we can receive the blessing? And I will send hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, and from, from before you. He's even going to send hornets. Hornets are worse than bees. Hornets are among the most dangerous stinging insects. Because they can sting repeatedly. In other words, they don't stop stinging you. He said, I'm even going to send them before you so that your enemy doesn't hurt you. This is the promises of God. God will do the impossible for you as we line up with his word. Hallelujah. And it begins by loving him. If we love God, and we walk continually in his way. A lot of us will avoid a whole lot of trouble. Amen. As we go to some place, the Holy Spirit will say, well, don't go down this street. Go the other way. He will lead and guide us continuously. I will not drive them out before you in one year, lest the land become desolate. And the beast of the field multiplied 
against you. What is he saying here? Some of us, we pray, and we believe that God and answer tomorrow. He don't like us. But he's not working on our behalf. That's the truth. Or he don't answer in six months. We have a problem with God. But God knows us more than we know ourselves. Amen. God knows if he deliver you tomorrow, not too long after you go, you're going to go back to the drugs. God knows if he deliver you from something, you're not strong enough to maintain the deliverance, to maintain the healing, to maintain the breakthrough. So what he does, he grooms us, he builds us up. Hallelujah. So we become stronger and we are well able to deal with whatever ice we might be delivered from. Hallelujah. And I will set your bombs from the Red Sea, even into the Sea of the Philistines. That is how much God is going to do for us. Hallelujah. What he was telling them. I'm going to set you up. I'm going to take care of you though you're in the wilderness. I'm going to take care of your enemies. I'm going to take care of the wild beasts. He was saying, I don't want to bring deliverance. I don't want to get rid of all the beasts all at once. He said, the place would be too desolate and then you could get hurt. Hallelujah. Some of us could get hurt instead of being better if God delivers some of us. There are people that God delivers all at once. As he's saying here, but there are people who got to be gradual. And as he do it gradual, he's building a relationship. He's setting boundaries. He's working on some things in your life. So that when you come to that expected end, you're strong enough to fight off any eyes. Hallelujah. He said, and I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand. And you shall drive them out before you. No, I trust you. There has to be a certain amount of trust that he trusts you to say, I will drive them out. Or you will drive them out, actually. Now we see that you're strong enough, you're built up. Your love is towards it. You don't compromise. You don't do things under the table. And he's saying, no, I can let you go. Because I know you can fight about those people. Those things that, could, that are going to come before you. I know that you have the strength to withstand anything that comes before you. Because now, I know you're a prayer warrior. You're going to pray your way through. Now I know you're loving the word. I see you in the world every day. Now I see your heart, your desire is to be more like me. Like David said, he panted after the water. Says that, sorry, as the deer panted after the water brooks. So my heart pants after you, God. Think about that. You know why he said a deer? Because a deer always drinks water before they eat food. So David is saying, the deer is not even thinking about food, he goes to the water first. So my heart pan for the water brooks. Just like the deer. I know you will supply that food, but all I want to do is be like that deer. and go to you. Because I know if I'm thirsty and I go to you, at that water brook, I'll be filled. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I learned something too about the day. I never understand that scripture, but when I read it and I looked up what it meant, it says the deer drinks water. That's why David said, My heart pant after the water brook. Could you imagine somebody's heart panting for God? If we all in here, our heart would come to that place. The all I want is God. All I want is Him. You walk. All I want is Him. You walk continually. 
in his way, God, only you. Only you, what can I do about this? Should I go to this place? God, I need to make a decision. I need you. Instead of going to people, I need you, Lord. There is a problem in my family, Lord. I need you more than ever. My heart is panting after you because I know you can solve this problem. We would be a better church. We would be a better people. Could you imagine the miracles that would happen in this place? Could you imagine the enthusiasm? People running in this place and say, I just want to be with God. Amen. I just want to be where God is. I just want to be under the anointing. I just want to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Amen. I want to eat of that word today. I'm hungry and I'm thirsty for what God is going to say to me. Hallelujah. And that's the kind of people God is looking for in 2022. Remember Gideon? Hallelujah. Oh, God chose his people. They lap like a dog. Are you ready to lap like a dog today? So you could be one of his, so you're ready to fight in the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. About to be with your way. Then he said, You shall make no covenant with them, nor with your gods. You don't make covenants with people who don't believe in God. You don't make co covenant with people because they're the supervisor and you feel they could push you in for promotion. God gives promotions. And when he gives it, it's permanent. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't have to make no covenant with your neighbor. Hallelujah. With your family. If it doesn't line up with the word of God. It must line up with the word of God. Hallelujah. And verse 33 says, They shall not dwell in your land. Lest they make you sin against me. Anything we leave in our lives that is a reproach to the Lord will ultimately be a snare unto us. I want to say that. Anything we leave in our lives that is a, a reproach to the Lord will ultimately be a snare unto us. Everything that is unchristian, unchristlike, must be rooted out. Hallelujah. God hates sin. And anytime we made a, make a covenant with somebody, else but the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just want to say we heap in coals on our head. Trouble. Not to be in line with this word. In the name of Jesus. You get me ready to close. And he says, uh, according to all that I show you after the pattern, this is not what I mean. Sorry about that. They shall not dwell in our land, lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their God, you will surely be a snare unto them. A snare is a trap. Hallelujah. A snare is a trap. Hallelujah. So you see in one of the Psalms, you say the snare is broken and I have escaped. My help is in the name of the Lord. So only when the snare is broken, you will escape. But when you keep company with these people, who is not Christian like, and you make deals with them, covenants with them, it becomes a snare, a trap. You are in prison, you're trapped. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians 4 8 says, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are lovely, 
Whatsoever things of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Romans 12, 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. This is what we are talking about today. Transformation. Hallelujah. Conforming to the unconditional love of God. Number one, we can't be conformed to this world. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may improve what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. In my closing, I want to say today that we got to love God with all our soul. I repeat, our mind our heart, everything in us. Hallelujah. It's not the way that we did things. But we need to make some changes. We need to eradicate some things in our lives. You've got to get serious for God. Hallelujah. The church has been playing for too long. And the enemy is having a field day. He could walk in and out. So we got to conform to the things of God. Not only when we are in church, when we are at home, when we are on the job, when we are on the street. Hallelujah, we got to have that love of Christ. So when people see us, they can see something is different about the brother. Something is different about the sister. We got to ex exemplify the real Christ. Hallelujah. Too many people today are saying, what church? They go to church. They're all the same. This is what things, some of the things they say about us. They're all the same. Hallelujah. They raise hands and they praise God, but outside there's something else. At home, there's something else. That's why we find when we witness the people and they know us, it's a problem for them to come to Christ. Because they see certain patterns in us that are not Christ-like. And to love God, we got to love the unlovely. We got to really fall in love with the unlovely. We got to have a desire to become more Christless, Christ-like, to be like him, to portray him anywhere we go. That people will see something is different about this lady. Something is different about this man. Something is different about this young boy. We got to be radicals for Christ. Coming here in 2022. I will say turn from our wicked ways. And turn to him. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. And I believe all of us today. Have something in our heart. Something. That's tugging at, at us. That's saying, come up higher. Come to a new place. No more procrastination. No more looking at somebody else. No more having that judgmental spirit. It's not me, Lord, but it's them. It's my brother, it's my sister, but it's not me, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. So I would ask, as I in the service, those of us who really feel today that we got to make some changes. Hallelujah. Seriously. Don't be ashamed. Hallelujah. We got one more week. God, I need the Holy Spirit today. I need a heart that will run after you, part after you like David. I want more of you, God. I'm not satisfied at the place where I am today. I've been playing church for too long. But I want to be sold out for you starting from today. In the name of Jesus, if you would come up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Anybody who feel like they want more of God this evening? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Father, as we bring these people to you this evening, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, Lord, we pray, Jesus, as they came boldly to the throne of grace, crying for mercy this evening, oh God. Lord God, we fill them with mercy and grace. Let them know, God, that you love them unconditionally in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that your heart is towards them to heal, to make them whole. My God, Lord Jesus, to transition them. Oh God, you have a plan and a purpose for each of their lives this evening and we declare that it will come to pass. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, but as they came unashamedly, my God, to confess their faults before you that they have fallen short of the glory of God, this evening, my God, I pray that you will break their hearts, oh God. In the name of Jesus, as they leave this place, that they will be the same. Oh God, but they shall be changed. And they shall be changed permanently. My God, no going back and forth. No more playing church in the mighty name of Jesus. But I pray this evening, oh God, that spirit of the living God, that the fire of God will envelop them, oh God. That fire will fall on them in the name of Jesus that they will have a heart to go forth and claim territory in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord ignite them with your power in the name of Jesus. Oh God touch that part that need to be touched the most bring conviction in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God reset that button this evening they need a reset in the mighty name of Jesus and Father God I pray oh God that they're going to be serious for the things of you oh God they won't be wishy-washy my God they won't be like blind oh God Jesus but that your spiritual eyes will be open to the things of God Lord put a hunger and a for righteousness into them in the name of Jesus wherever they have failed wherever they fall short my God wherever they have disappointed you Lord I pray in the name of Jesus that you will forgive that you will heal that you will restore in the name of Jesus oh God as they open their mouth fill it this evening in the name of Jesus that the only desire is to serve and is to please you, O oh God. Not man, but the true and the living God. In the name of Jesus. So, Father God, I pray that you wash them in your blood. In the name of Jesus. Wash them in the blood. Cover them with the blood. My God. They deep in the name of Jesus. Oh God, put a long in your heart for you O oh God like never before oh God we give you praise we pray a fresh anointing oh God an anointing that will destroy those yokes destroy yokes of bondage in the mighty name of Jesus and God we give you praise oh God we give you honor this evening we give you glory my God in the mighty name of of Jewish Jesus. Do it for your children. Father God. Do a speedy work in them, oh God. That it will line up in this end time army and be serious to work. Oh God, while it's still there. Because night is coming when we will see the Lord in the name of 
Jesus. Oh God, we give you praise and we thank you for their lives. Bring transformation in the name of Jesus. Oh God, bring transformation in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh God, we give you praise and we thank you, oh God. Let your light shine in them that men will see your goodness and your mercy, oh God. Oh God, let your light shine in them, oh God. That men will want to come to this Jesus that we talk about who never fails in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we thank you and we praise you and we bless you for doing it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we present your great servant before you. Amen. Lord, she has spoken your heart. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask that you pour back into her a full treasure. Father, we ask for the overflow. Yes, that even in this season, oh God, Amen. you will give her double for her cross. Yes, Father, we thank you for this trophy of your grace. Amen. Lord, we ask that you replenish her yes. in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That as she stays constantly seeking your face, yes. oh God, that you will reveal more and more unto her. Yes. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's clap for the Lord. Um, in terms of announcements, you can always follow us online, our YouTube channel. If you, if you don't know, it's Overcomers Deliverance Network. If you do a YouTube search, you can. Go to Overcomers Deliverance Network, and we have, I think, over a thousand videos that can really teach you um, spiritual things. Um, these are deep. Some of our teachings are, are deep. As deep as they are, they are biblical. Amen. Because you can be deep and deviate from the Bible. So they are deep and biblical. We, we meet once a month, not virtually like that. But we are praying that in the year 2022, we will secure a space of our own. Yeah. We are praying earnestly for that. Yeah. We are looking for space. And by the grace of God, we have the financial resources for the space. Yeah. So the issue is not the finances. Sometimes when you're looking for space, the issue is finance. Who knows what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Our issue is not finance. The finance is there. The people said they can pay six months deposit. We are ready to do that. If we see the right place. Yeah. So we are believing God that in 2022, that door will open. Mm -hmm. I said to Pastor Corali, I said, when we get that place, our first weekend there will be a short term. Friday to Sunday. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm. So Amen. let's keep that in prayer. Mm -hmm. We're going to go before the Lord now for the tithes and the offering. And um, you can give electronically, you can give cash, you can give check. At Overcomers and Price, the main thing to note is that there's no compulsion whatsoever to give. No, we don't compel anybody to give, we don't manipulate anybody to give, but you must know that God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And his word says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. On Cash App, our Cash App handle is dollar sign over commas USA. If you do Cash App, dollar sign over commas USA. If you do PayPal, it's paypal.me forward slash overcomers in Christ. And then if you do Zell, the email is admin at overcomersusa.org or our church number 929-261-8599. If you're here and you need an envelope for your offering, we will be glad to provide one for you. Praise the Lord. Oh, Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. What a day, Lord Jesus. What a minute, what an hour, Father God. Jesus, we thank you, Father God. 
that you know the chanting vision might have. It's not what it looks like. It's not what it seems like, Lord Jesus. Once you give us all, we're going to pull it back. We're going to give it back to you, Father God, Lord Jesus. We're going to give you that ten that we ask for, Lord. We're going to give it to you, Father God. As long as you have blessed us with a job, sometimes someone will give us something. And we're going to still give out of that, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, because, Lord, we cannot hear the word of God and be in the, have a roof over our head and we have nowhere to sit or nowhere to relax and hear the word of God. And, Lord, this is a place, Father God, wherever you go, you have to pay. Wherever you go, things have to be, you know, paid for. Lord, we thank you, Father God. We give you all the praise and all the thanks, Father God, for what you are doing in each and every one of us, Lord. We thank you, Father God. We say, give and it shall be given. Yes, Lord. Shaking, overflowing, my God. Isn't, isn't that really nice when you give to the Lord and sometimes you're wondering where anything coming from and out of the way. Someone just come and just hand you something. Someone just come, what a pleasure. And yeah. then you say, my God, I remember I didn't have. And I give. And look at what I get back now. Lord, we just thank you. Yeah. And we we'll continue, Father God, to pour your love in us so far and give us the spirit of giving in the name of Jesus. Because we cannot overgive you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanks. We pray that each and every one of us here, Father God, that have given to you, O oh God, today, Father God. We pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that you will continue to bless us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless what we have, Father God, Lord yes. Jesus, because you love cheerful people. Hallelujah. So we give you all the praise and give you all the thanks, O oh God. We pray in the name of God. We pray, Father God, Lord Jesus, that the money, O oh God, that come in this afternoon, Lord God, we ask of you to bless it and keep it, Father God, and multiply that Amen. money so that it will continue to further do what has to be done in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Amen. And we say, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. We look at life and we say, Lord Jesus, what are we, my God? And we have it and we keep it and we, oh my God. So give, give to the Lord. He's going to bless. He's going to bless in the name of Jesus. Look at how um we just said a little something. The other day I was taking care of my father and um I went into the room and I just continued to cry because and my sister home she had cancer, one one of her breasts come out. And then I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, what is this going on? And I just continued to cry and praying, taking care of my father. And I said, Lord, well, you have to do something. I don't understand what's going on. But hear this. When I finished taking off my father, I went outside and I said, let me put on the, the phone. Let me hear what pastors, one of the pastors have to say. And what came on? Pastor Andy came on with Ma, 20 something, with a woman with an issue of blood. And God, he, he revolved so much on faith. And the Lord was just saying to me, Where are your feet? Where are your feet? Don't you trust me? Don't you trust me? And that word, I sit down and I just sat in that word. Amen. And I said, Lord, give me faith, spiritual faith to believe in God. Amen. You know, so we just have to have that faith to believe. Sometimes when we go through something, Lord, where the money coming to do this? Where the money? Why have to give this? And Lord, I have money to do this. But if we just trust the Lord Amen. and we have that faith to believe, God will send the word through the, um, he's going to send that word for you. Amen. Through the word, through yeah. someone, someone yeah. will just the come and give them anything, you know what I mean? So we just thank God and we yes. say, Lord, let your will be done for yeah. each and every one of us here, Father God. We give you praise and we give you thanks and we say, Lord, have to wait. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Open the floor briefly for testimony. If anyone has a brief testimony and would like to share, please, this is the time to do so. The floor is open. Um, just want to give God thanks and praise for His keep and power. Amen. Um, this week, um, this week I had um, I had a doctor appointment, which I wasn't supposed to have until January, but the doctor called and said, you know, for coming. 
and I did some blood work, and I just want to just give God thanks and praise. And, and in spite of all that, to see the faithfulness of God. And Wednesday, I was home and he called. And he said, you know, Miss Henry, you know, when you're coming because he saw, you know, um, the some level was high in your, it was in your blood. And I was like, I don't believe you need a lot of sodium. But then anyway, he said, could be a lot. And he said, I will, I will, you know, call the emergency room and tell them to expect you. But I just want to thank God for Jesus. You know, because if it wasn't for him, when we hear these news, you know, they will pray. Yeah. But I thank God for yeah. keeping, and you know, that for, um, his power to keep me. And I just want to thank God, you know, that any long story is that I went, he called up, he said, you know, what is send me, go by the word emergency room, come in the office, and we'll do for the blood. Because if it's anything, you know, we will, um, if, according to the result, we, if, if, if it's still high, we will send it. But I just begin to say, God, what God can do that I don't receive that report, you know. And I just want to say to God be the glory that you know I uh, they took the blood again and then uh he said I could either stay or go back home. But I went back home. And I just want to thank God that he called and he said, you know, Miss Henry, I um everything is fine. And Amen. in the night, I just want to give God some thanks to just for my husband and I got back home. You know, late in the night, my husband said, you know, I can't bounce me today. I said, what? No, I said, you mean, I said, you know, how come you didn't tell me that? So I just want to thank God for his angels. Yeah. And even as, you know, even as um, Deaconess was praying, when we give to God, it don't always come back in money, but in protection. Amen. You know? So I just thank God. And so, and then I looked at my husband's foot. They were like some little bruises. He said, you know, it was a car that hit him from behind as he swung. So I just want to thank God for his keeping him, for protecting him. It because they are men. They, they look in that company, they lost bikers. You know, car hit them and they and they didn't make it. So I just want to thank God for his angels and his keeping power in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I just want to give God a praise and glory. I just want to thank him for this year. Um, I've been on point, I believe I've been on point with God's word, with his prophecy, full of it. As far as what he explained, you know, as far as being obedient to him. And and um things that happened to me this year. And um, but the thing was that God said, just keep my word and be faithful. Stay within my word. Don't work out of don't work outside of my word. Well, just stay inside of my will. And he said, everything else that you see that you have a problem from God will bless. It was like many mountains. And I think Prophet, I think I was saying this a few weeks ago about mountains, like the mountains that we have in our mind, the relief, the doubt, like the impossible. And this, I told ID this the other day, and I called them up because I was so happy that um, I was saying this new promotion I got at work. Mm. I was saying, oh, thank you, God. I've already, you know, I thank God for that. I said, God, now I need to go back to school and finish doing my master's, right? And I said, oh, man, but what about this, this situation? I'm like, I'm in debt with the student loan, blah, blah, blah. So all of a sudden, some reason, I got an email from on board of that, some collecting agency, like, this is all we need to play out, blah, blah, blah. So I called her mother, and I spoke with the operator. She told me something, you know, we like over $1,400. I'm thinking it's like $50,000, $75,000. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh my God, thank you. And I said, wow, and this is to say what I'm saying, that once you focus on God's word, you stay focused on the help. He take care of everything else. Like you seek his kingdom, his righteousness, everything just comes to you. It just comes to you. Like I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just saying to myself, I'm gonna get to it. I might have to just save up, save up, save up money. And then and it just came just like that. Amen. Just like that. Amen. Amen. And I just also want to say that this is the greatest this came a few days ago. The Spirit of God said, Self, I'm giving you new faith. You're gonna need it. He was speaking about recently. This new faith, a new season. And I was saying, wow. And, and I prayed on it, and it just started manifesting. It just started manifesting, like, wow. Like, he said, just take all those doubts that I have in your mind, just it has to go away. Everything that impossible, God could do the possible for you, the impossible for you. And, like, and I started believing, like, that mindset. We had to change our mindset. Yeah. You know? And, and God had just put that spirit in me. And um, I'm just here to say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah was so weak. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us rise to close. The altar will be open for prayer after we close. Is someone blessed tonight? Amen. I am. Hallelujah.
Lord, let your favor go ahead of us. Yes, Lord. Lord, and open doors that no man can shut. Yes, Father, yes. as we continue in this new week, yes, you are the God, oh God, that owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Yes, Lord, that you will provide for your people. Yes, Lord. Lord, that you will meet every need here according to your riches and glory in Christ yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. That not one will lack. Lord, I pray for supernatural, divine abundance Amen. in the lives of your people. Yes, Lord. That their cup will run it over. Yes, Lord. I pray for the overflow blessings yes, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Amen. That Lord, before the year comes to an end, that you will settle everything that needs to be settled in your favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus yes, Christ the love of God, and the sweet fellowship rest and abide with us, now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, 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 praise,